This is Matt Holtquist from the QuickBooks University. I wanted to put together a quick video because oftentimes uh, a lot of our clients use uh, registers instead of, um, you know, put doing individual invoices and uh, sales receipts. And you, what I mean by registers is cash registers. So it's a retail store. Um, could be a restaurant, could be something of that nature. And so there's a lot of clients and, and a lot of business owners out there that don't do invoices per se in QuickBooks. So how do you enter your sales when you use a cash register? Okay. And that's what I want to show you in this video. Okay. There's, there's a couple ways to do it and we've done it a couple of different ways with clients and we've done it with journal entries. We've done it with sales receipts. Uh, but I wanted to show you in this sample file, this is a QuickBooks sample file, uh, Ginger's Gift Shop, okay? And so in this particular example, they have cash registers and they're not tracking individual customers because that would be impossible, okay? They've got people coming in all day, they're buying things, they ring things up at the register. So how do you record all those sales? Okay, now a lot of programs today will just link with QuickBooks. You can uh, export the information and it's going to record the sales for you, but you still need to know what that process is and how it's doing it so you know that it's right or not right. Okay, okay, so the first thing in here is I want to show you uh, these sales are going to be recorded as sales receipts because this is money that you're getting immediately right at the sale. So let's click on this. And I want to scroll over to, we'll say this, uh, this sales receipt says daily sales summary. So they've customized this a little bit. All right. Okay. So again, this is a lot different than entering an invoice or entering just an individual sales receipt to one customer. So the first thing you'll notice is for the customer job, they have three set up. They have a daily sales summary, register one, register two. Okay, so what I recommend is you set up each register as a customer. So you may have one register, two, three, four, five, whatever the number, but set up each register as a job uh, or as a customer, okay? And then they're doing a daily sales summary. So a cash register will, uh, at the end of the day, when you close it out and you do the drawer count, will spit out uh, the uh, Z out and the X out report. Okay, and this is where you're going to take this information from. There is a summary on the tape or uh, it could be online, whatever it is, that prints out a summary of those sales. Okay, and with that summary, it's also printing out, you know, all the money you collected. All right. So you'll see here the different items that are set up for the daily sales. Okay. So let me go over to the item list. And you'll see here that they have these inventory parts set up. Okay. They've got some non-inventory. Then they've got total sales that are non-taxable. Okay. Those are coming out of non-inventory parts, taxable, cash over short. They've got these set up separately, and then they have their payment uh, types. So they've got Amex, Cash Check, Visa, MasterCard. They've got sales tax items, etc. Okay. So if you go into the sales receipt, you're going to get all this information straight from the cash register tape, and you'll see some of these are positive, some are negative. Okay. This basically has to balance to zero when you enter this. So they're entering, okay, total taxable sales per the point of sale report, which is the X or the Z out. It was 46, 42, 51. Total non-taxable sales, 24, 65, 67. And then their, their payment methods, which are gonna be negative, okay? Because that's basically saying, okay, these were the sales and this was the cash collected. And then we've got checks, cash, cash over short, because when you count the register at the end of the day, you know, typically, hopefully it'll balance to zero, but there's sometimes, you know, some miscellaneous items that uh, cause a cash over short in a drawer. Okay. 
and then they're reducing essentially their inventory for these individual items. All right. So at the end of the day, um, they're going to record a, if I go over to the profit and loss, you'll see it's going to record the merchandise and they've got service and it records those daily sales without having to uh, record individual sales to every single customer. Okay. So this can get a little bit complicated and a little bit confusing, but the important thing to remember here is uh, when you're setting up your business or you're in business and you say, okay, well, how am I going to record, uh, you know, all these individual sales? I've got cash registers. Well, there is a way to do this in QuickBooks and it's just like I just talked about here. One, setting up customers as your registers. Uh, two, setting up your items to reflect uh, usually total sales, okay, for the day. Uh, your payment methods, which are going to be, you know, Amex, Visa, MasterCard, check, cash, etc., cash over short, and then how this is affecting your inventory items, okay? And you'll see here that it's also showing the taxable amounts, non-taxable amounts. Uh, that's an adjustment for the cash over short, and then it's calculating the sales tax down here. Your uh, batch report or your point of sale report that you print off from your register should show the sales tax collected. And so this should also match down here what the sales tax collected was. All right. So that is a brief summary of how you do this. Uh, it is possible to do it. I get that question quite a bit. How do we record this stuff when we don't use, you know, individual sales receipts or we don't re record individual customers? This is how you do it. All right. Hope this helped. If you have any questions, you know, head on over to qbuniversity.org. Uh, we've got uh, a program over there with 45 videos explaining how to use QuickBooks uh, from start to finish uh, so that you can keep your own books. And uh, you can also send me an email. You can contact me there. Happy to answer questions you have. Look forward to seeing you over there, qbuniversity.org.